Hello, hello. We are on day 30. So let's have a five to 10 second celebration. So how are we going to celebrate? Oh, we're going to celebrate with some confetti. Oh, there's some confetti. Make sure that you get it out of your hair. And then we're going to have some confetti coming from the bottom. And, and then, of course, we have to have some words coming across. Yay! 30 days, 30 days of following the Lord, 30 days of being steadfast. And I appreciate your commitment. I value all of your time and your attention. And I pray that it is worth it for you. Amen. Praise God. Most gracious God, Father, we thank you for 30 days of being in your presence from sitting at your feet, Lord God, and learning more and more about you. And Father, we pray that as we go on to the next increment of time, that it'll get better and better with time. And Father, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, glory, and praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So your reading for today is the book of Exodus, chapter 11, verse 1, through chapter 12, verse 51, and then Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 34. Amen. So today's lesson uh, is coming from the book of Exodus. So as you read on your own, you're going to hear this twice. I'm going to explain to you according to our devotion. And then when you read it, you can read it with better understanding. So I really like today because we are taking um, the end and then whenever you read it from the beginning, you can you can bring some meaning for yourself in the middle. So this lesson for today talks about, I remember we talked about Pharaoh after Joseph that did not really know who Joseph was, didn't really appreciate who Joseph was just thought that, okay, if Joseph is as powerful historically as, as I've heard about, then I don't want his people to, to rise up and they'll take my spot. So we got to do something right now. Let's just enslave them so that they won't even think about becoming who they are, figuring out that they are um, more powerful than, than, what, than what they really seem to be. So Israelites were enslaved by the Egyptians. God is at a place where he is tired of seeing his children, his people suffering. And so now he's going to uh, come to their aid and, and he's, he's going to bring them out. He's going to bring them out of captivity. They are being enslaved. The Israelites are crying out, um, do not like what's going on. And God is saying, I can't let my people suffer any longer. You know what? I'm bringing them out. They have cried to me long enough. I'm saving my children. I'm bringing them out. So we know we have Moses that became the, the spokesperson for God. God used Moses to, to speak for him. So he told Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh that I said, let my people go. And Pharaoh's not trying to hear it. He, he's not interested. He's not, you know, I don't know who. It doesn't matter to me. They will never leave as my slaves. I, I mean, I got them. They're, they're captured. Whatever you say, I'm not freeing them. I just won't. And so then God starts to do things that shows Pharaoh, you know, hey, I mean business. I said, let my people go. And so if you read about there's some plagues that were released and different things that were done and Pharaoh's like, you know what? You can do whatever you want. I, I don't I don't care. You can release every animal you want in the world. I, I'm not letting the Egyptians go. You can you can have the water to turn red, purple, green, black, whatever you want to do. I'm not letting, I'm not letting the Israelites go. And so God says, Okay, I've had enough of, of this with you. Now let me show you who I am. And so he releases the death angel and the angel will come and it will it will kill all of the the children firstborn children male children 
that that it, it passes over. And so here you have the Israelites in the middle of this of this war going on. And God wants to protect his children, of course, because if he releases the, the angel, the angel is not going to knock on the door and say, hey, who are you? Who's, whose side are you on? They're just going to carry out the command of the Lord. So the Lord has to have a way to that his angel will know, hey, don't touch that. That 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 family is mine. Those people are my people. Don't touch those people. So how did God do that? So the Israelites to go out and uh, slay a lamb without blemish, slay a lamb, white, without spots, pure, slay a lamb. Take the blood of the lamb and put on the outside of your doorpost. When the angel sees that blood of the lamb on the outside of that doorpost, it will pass over your family and you will go unharmed. What's interesting is that God did the same thing to the Egyptians that the Egyptians did to the Israelites. If you remember, they tried the same thing. This is how Moses was placed in, in the water in a little basket. And this is how Pharaoh's daughter was able to have Moses and raise Moses as her own in the palace. If they were doing the same thing to the Israelites, same thing, same thing. Just want to point that out. So here we have this setting where every time the blood of the lamb was seen on a doorpost, the angel from the Lord knew to pass over that house. So what does that have to do with, with me? Okay, I, understand, I see the story. What does it have to do with me? That is just a, a, a prelude to what God would do again in the New Testament. This time he did not use an animal. This time he used himself. This time he used his son to be the sacrificial lamb as John the Baptist said in the book of John when he was announcing Jesus Christ's coming. He says that, behold, Jesus is the lamb of God. He is, he is the precious, uh, spotless, no, no blemish, just pure, pureness of God coming to save us from our sins. So if you look at things symbolically, you have Pharaoh, which is the enemy, because as we know that because of Adam and Eve, the enemy was given uh, control of this world. He's called the prince of this world. And then we have the bondages of sin that has many, many people captured and enslaved. Then you have Jesus, which is greater than Moses. It is God. It, it is God. Jesus became, he didn't give orders to, he became the sacrificial lamb. And his blood, the shedding of his blood covers us, covers us from many things coming our way that will pass over. You woke up this morning. You're looking at this video. Guess what? Whatever danger, it passed over your house. Praise God. You're healthy, well, and strong. Guess what? Sickness passed over you. Why did it pass over? Because you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only are you covered and protected, but Jesus took care of every Pharaoh in our life and defeated just like it happened in the Old Testament. Every Pharaoh of your life has been defeated in Jesus' name. Every bondage of sin that had us all at one time entangled, Jesus came and freed us from those entanglement of sin. 
For the Bible says whom the son sets free is free indeed. And so just all those pieces that happened in the Old Testament, God came, Jesus came and took care of all of it in one. He took care of taking care of our Pharaohs by defeat. He released us from the bondages of sin and he covers us from our hurt, harm, or danger. So you may hear in church, uh, we, the adults, or maybe you've heard uh, your friends or, or some that you know pray and they will say, I plead the blood of Jesus over X, Y, and Z. The same, it's with the same understanding from the Old Testament that if I plead the blood over me as a doorpost, if I plead the blood over the roadways that my parents travel, if I plead the blood over my bed as I go to sleep, if I plead the blood over my school where I attend all the time, if I plead the blood over my mom or my dad's job where they go to every day, if I plead the blood over the car that we travel in all the time, if I plead the blood that I have the understanding that when I plead the blood of Jesus over each and everything that concerns my life and my family's life, whatever evil, whatever chaos will pass over and we're safe. So now you have a new revelation about the blood of Jesus. There is nothing, there is nothing more powerful than the blood of God, the blood of Jesus. Remember I told you I had a revelation that I didn't, I, I mean, I heard, but I really didn't understand it before. This is the revelation. I was always saying I plead the blood and, and it may sound silly, but I said it, but I didn't have like that, that deep understanding of it. And one night God just gave it to me. I was like, wow, it's the blood of God. Duh, it's the blood of God. So why do we plead the blood of Jesus? It's the blood of God. There is nothing, there is no power greater than God. And so I will plead God's power all over everything. And that's what I pray that you will start to do now. You have an understanding. You have a, a given revelation. Let the blood of Jesus cover everything concerning you your future, your destiny, your schools, your parents' car, your parents, you, your siblings, your mind, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your heart, where you're walking, where you're traveling, everywhere you go, get into the habit of pleading the blood of Jesus because there's power. There's no greater power and everything that could harm you has to pass over. Hallelujah. It has to pass over. It passes over. And so I pray that you are blessed. I pray, pray that you have some revelation, some insight, some understanding. And now you have power in your mouth. So use it. And so Father, we come before you thanking you, Lord God, that you are almighty, that you are all powerful. And Father, I take this moment to plead the blood of Jesus over every eye that is watching. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over every ear that is hearing. Father, I plead, I soak each and every individual that is watching and their families and their schools and their homes and their cars and every road that they travel. Father, I soak it in the blood of Jesus that no hurt, harm, or danger may come near them in the name of Jesus. That every plan of the enemy, Father, it will pass over them, Father, for they are covered in your blood. Father, we thank you for the blood. 
Father, we praise you for the blood. And we give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you and see you next time.